Hey, welcome back YouTube for another tutorial on our multiplayer with Node.js and Unity uh, series. Um, I think this is honestly going to be our shortest video. <laughs> like we just did our last one, it was like an hour and a half. So if you guys made it through that, like congratulations for the server restructure. It was, uh, in order to be taught, it's much easier to teach with a single class to get the basics than it is to just start object oriented right off the start. Um, so the refactor was a was a lot, but it's it's gonna help make features like what we're gonna do now uh, much easier. So uh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna just do a little polishing here, and we're gonna be doing the bullet smoothing. So the way typically the bullet smoothing will work, or any projectile in that case, is that from the server when it gets fired, we're gonna give it a direction and a speed. And we're gonna let the client kind of simulate the bullet. So it'll look super smooth on a client. And then what we're going to do is that on the server, you would just keep updating its position and stuff. And I'll show you kind of how to get it very close to being synced. And then in future tutorials, when you guys have your map data inside the server, we'll be able to do a lot of, of the wall collision checks and all that jazz within within the server. So we're gonna be doing a lot of bullet smoothie on the client today. And, it'll sh and then later on when we get the map data and stuff on, then uh, you'll see why we didn't remove a lot of the functionality because we will use it later. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the project. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna open up the code gameplay folder. And I'm gonna create a new class called projectile. And we'll go ahead and open that up. And so right now I have, uh, we're gonna be adding two classes there. We're gonna be adding a projectile class as well as the network client class here. Um, just uh, because now we have this created, we can, we're gonna open up our bullet prefab. So if you're on the newer version of Unity like me, you can just double click the uh, bullet to open the prefab by itself. If you're on an older version, you gotta drag the bullet into the scene, edit it, Make sure you hit apply, delete it from the scene, that sort of stuff. All right, so we're gonna open up bullet and we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna add a component and we're gonna add projectile here. So just uh, add it to here, make sure you hit save, just go back to the scene. Okay, so we're gonna open up the projectile class here and we're gonna have a couple things. So the first thing is we're gonna put it in the namespace of project gameplay because that's the folder it's in. We are going to add a vector two for the direction and a float for the speed. And then I like putting them as a private and then we're gonna have just like, you can either have like an initialized function or you can do what I'm doing here. And we're just gonna have a vector two. We're just gonna have a, a property. And you could you could uh, put this all into one if you really want, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's just kind of how I structure stuff. And then so we're gonna set direction is equal to, and if you've never used properties before, uh, when you use a property and use the set functionality, uh, value kind of comes with it. So you're putting something into it, it's gonna come into this, uh, this, pra this parameter called value, and it's gonna be whatever the return type here is if you had a, a get function. So we're gonna have direction, and a float we're gonna call in speed. And you'll notice that I changed the capitalization on these guys. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't need a start function for this. And what we do need is the update. So on update, we're gonna have, we're gonna calculate its new position. And so that's gonna be direction times speed times time dot delta time. Okay, so this is good and all for uh, simulating this on your client, but we also have to kind of assume uh, for the network updating, right? So in your server, when you update per like server tick, right? If I go to index.js, it's every 100 milliseconds. So we have to kind of account for that as well. Um, and just from trial and error, I found out 
whatever this number is, if you basically get rid of, uh, if you divide it by 10 or whatever, so um, basically just drop the last zero, um, that will be your number within uni. So if this is 100 milliseconds, I'm gonna put the number 10 inside of uni. So I'm gonna do that inside the network client. More people might want that later on. You might find that, hey, you know what other classes might want this specific number. So I'm just gonna at the top here, I'm gonna have just the public uh, constant float. And I'm gonna call this server underscore update underscore time. And like I said, it was 100, it's 100 milliseconds on the server. So I'm gonna divide that by 10 and make it uh, 10 for the client here. And then it doesn't matter where really in here you put it. I like putting it before. I always like having the time dot delta time at the end. Uh, we're just gonna add network client and then control period. Uh, and then I'm gonna bring in the namespace project networking. And then I'm gonna go in here and start typing all capitals server update time. So to get your position, it's gonna be the direction times the speed times the server update time and then times dot delta so it's always smooth per frame. And then the last thing we're gonna do is that gives you like an incremental uh, based on like a normalized value. So we're gonna go transform position is plus equal. We're gonna say, because we have a vector two up above, we're gonna say vector three. And we're gonna go plus dot x, plus dot y, and zero. And depending on your orientation for your game, if you're following along or if you have a, have your own game you're working on, uh, you might have to play around with uh, y being set to z as well. Uh, so just try that, check that out. Like if you have a 3D game, most likely you have uh, your 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 horizontal planes are X and Z and Y is up and down. Okay, so that's all good for there. We're gonna go over to the network client now, and we're gonna be editing our server spawn. So we're gonna scroll down here to on server spawn, and we already have a detection if it's the bullet. And we're going to be adding a new property uh, for speed. So we're going to say float speed. And you'll notice I'm doing this only for the bullet, not for other stuff. We're going to say e.data. And I'm going to pass this in as speed all lowercase from the server. And then dot f for the float. Okay, so because we added the class uh, to the bullet prefab, uh, we now will have a projectile. as a class is stuck onto it. So we're gonna go projectile is equal to spawn object, just like just like above, get component, uh, projectile. And then we're gonna say projectile dot direction is equal to a new vector two, uh, direction X and direction Y, because we're actually already passing that information. So we can just use that. And then projectile speed, what we just brought in and that's gonna be equal to speed okay beautiful so last thing we need to do is edit some server stuff so if you open up the server um, you're gonna go into uh, game lobby.js so the reason why we're in game lobby.js is because the game lobby actually has the firing command whereas the base does not right like the base just has base functionality where game lobby is actually for the game itself. So you're gonna open up game lobby. I tend to right click up here and go to close others um, while I'm only working on the certain scripts that I, that I actually need. Okay. So uh, we're gonna come down to the, uh, it's about 106, it's the uh, on fire bullet. And we already actually, if we go to bullet itself, we actually already have a speed right because the server is calculating this right for its on update uh, so we just need to attach that to like the receipt that we're sending back so i'm gonna go and just at the bottom here i'm gonna do comma speed colon bullet dot speed right so that's gonna go into the bullet object and grab its speed property it's gonna be 0.5 like i said um if you assume that everything's just a projectile and you're handling the speed, um, this allows you that if you don't have bullets or maybe you have this like rocket that goes super slow and speeds up or something or or the sniper bullet goes like twice as fast, like 
a, a bunch of different things where you could have speed could be totally different, then that's why we're passing it through. Okay, and then we're gonna pass in just like we did before. And then the last thing we're gonna do is, so currently right now in the update, uh, we're calling uh, update bullets, right? And the update bullets goes through all the bullets and it checks if it's destroyed. If it's destroyed, it's gonna despawn it. If it's not despawned, right now it calculates its new position because it did an update and then it sends out that little command. So we actually don't need that functionality anymore. I'm just going to comment that out. And the reason why I'm commenting it out is because in the future, you're gonna to wanna to do, when we have the map data, you're gonna to wanna to do that sort of checks either here or we're gonna be doing it in the bullet update. Uh, so just, just because um, this is like the old stuff, so we're just gonna kinda of comment that out to be like, okay, this is what we used to do and it's now getting replaced by this this other functionality. Okay, cool. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna come over to here. I'm gonna do npm start. And we're gonna start up the server. And we'll go back to Unity. We're gonna hit play. And we're gonna hit join now. We're gonna run around and we're gonna shoot. And you're gonna notice that the bullet is super smooth now. And if you add another client, so we'll add another client here. We'll hit play and join now. So the other client is joined. We'll back up here. He's going to shoot and you'll notice that it's super smooth for his bullets. And if I shoot, it's super smooth for me. Awesome. So that is our smoothing tutorial. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, that's honestly the shortest tutorial that I've done. <laughs> uh, so hope you guys like it. Uh, we're gonna be doing it. I'm not gonna say a lot of tutorials gonna now be short, but we're gonna be doing a lot of little things like this where it's like, hey, this is how you do this sort of functionality now that we have the base all set up and we can do that sort of stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you guys hit the, I think they have like a little bell or something. Make sure you guys hit that so you guys get notifications when I uh, upload new stuff. And join the Discord. Uh, it's down in the, disc, down in the description down below. Check out the Patreon. I'm always looking for um, people that really like my tutorials and they'd like to help out. Check out my Patreon. And join the Discord. Like, If you guys have any questions or anything or you guys just want to hang out and show your project or whatever like join the discord down in the description like we're always chatting in it so we'd love to see everybody there Alrighty, guys as always have a good one just wanted to make sure i give a nice shout out to the people i'm over on patreon that uh, help me support and help me do twitch and youtube tutorials um so thank you and you guys will be in the following list jaren frost Hey everyone, if you guys liked the video, make sure you guys click that subscribe button, give it a like, and make sure to comment. It really helps out. And if you guys are looking to support the project further, I also have my Patreon, which will be linked in the description down below. Thank you, and have a good day.